Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today I'll be doing a quick comparison between the Google Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now previously on my channel, I've done the Galaxy versus the Pixel. I've done the iPhone versus the uh, Galaxy, but I've never done the Pixel versus the iPhone. So these are two heavy hitters on the market. Uh, so y'all know my style. If y'all seen my previous video, I talk about things that I feel that matter. So I'm not a huge spec junkie. I don't go through the list talking about benchmarks and things of that nature. I just give y'all my real world usage and y'all just take my word for it or don't. And we just go and back and forth in the comment section like that. So stick around if y'all want to see who wins this comparison because I do announce the winner and which one is the better phone in my opinion. So let's get straight into it. Now, the way I feel about the Pixel, this is just a cheaper version of a Galaxy if you just want something Android that has a lot of good things going for it, but you know, you don't care about a whole, whole lot of features and things of that nature. Get this phone. Of course, when it comes to Apple, this is the best. This is a heavy hitter. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, if you, I say 11 Pro Max and under, go ahead and upgrade and get you one of these bad boys. So let's get into the comparison. First things first is battery. A lot of people care how long the phone is going to last when it comes to battery. So in my comparison, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is still going to beat this phone as far as battery. However, I'm, I'm not going to say this the whole video. Don't make that let you think that this is a bad battery by any means. The Google Pixel 7 Pro is top five when it comes to battery, in my opinion, in the Android market. You know, the only thing that's rivaling it is like the Galaxy and like some overseas phones and things of that nature. And I'm going to take this case off this iPhone so, you know, I can give it a straight up fair comparison. But these are my, uh, actually, this isn't my favorite color when it comes to the iPhone. My personal favorite is the silver, but I do like this snow color. But the purple is nice. I'm going to get this because this is the new color. Um, it's mid-2023 right now. Well, early 2023. So roughly in six to seven months, these are going to come out with a new version. You'll see the Pixel 8 Pro. You'll see the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So... Is buying either one of these right now a good idea? Yeah, you're probably going to get a better deal when it comes to the Pixel. But when it comes to the iPhone, Apple doesn't really discount unless you're doing like a trade-in. So if you're trading this uh, 12 Pro Max in or whatever for one of these, 11 Pro Max, you're getting $800 off, go for it. But back to the battery. Overall, iPhone 14 Pro Max is better. Second thing a lot of people care about um, is the display quality. Now, again, on the Pixel... You're getting better density because this one goes to, well, resolution rather, because this one goes to 1440p. So when you're watching YouTube videos, this one is going to be the better one for you. However, if you're outdoors and you like the brightness um, of your phone, then the iPhone 14 Pro Max definitely gets a lot brighter than the Pixel indoors and outdoors. And you can see that actually on camera here. I have a privacy screen protector on here. So if I peel this off, it's definitely double the brightness ever but even with that privacy screen protector on to me it's still giving slightly brighter or at least equal to the google pixel 7 pro and that's saying something um next i want to talk about their respective ecosystems now what i mean by the ecosystems is what do you have to pair with these like and people may or may not care about this but i personally do so there are some people that do with the iphone you have AirPods, you have the MacBook, you have the Apple Watch, you have the Apple Pencil, you have an iPad. You have so much to go with this phone. With this phone, basically you have a Pixel Watch and you have the Google Pixel Buds Pro or whatever. However, when you're pairing the Google Pixel Buds with the, Google, with the Pixel and pairing AirPods here, when it comes to sound quality, the iPhone is going to win every single time with any version of AirPods versus the Pixel Buds, in my opinion. So when it comes to music and listening to music, whether you're using Apple Music, Spotify, whatever, Apple is going to generate the better sound quality. Not to say the sound quality on here is bad, uh, but Apple generates the better sound quality to me. A lot of people text. So when we're talking about texting, I'm maybe, well, I ain't going to go into messages or whatever, but let's just talk about texting. iMessage is, you know, one of the greatest messaging apps ever. However, when it comes to, um, I forgot, RCS messages, Google is right there now. Google is right there. You can send, you can um, 
Cirrus, when people are typing you back with the little dots or whatever, you can see when it's red. Deliver, you can send high resolution um, pictures through the messaging apps and everything. So this one, I'm going to give it a tie because, again, iMessages, you know, you can't do it cross-platform. However, if you're an Android user messaging another Android user, then, hey, you're going to love it. Now, when it comes to video chat, iMessage by default is, again, one of the greats. But when it comes to quality, let me help y'all understand that. When it comes to quality, in my opinion, Google Duo or Google Meet, whatever they changed it to now, is actually better when it comes to quality, in my opinion. However, iMessage, again, is just naturally built in, so more people are technically going to use it over um, Google Video Chat, whatever you want to call it. So when Google integrates this in the natural call system across the board with different phones, then maybe, just maybe, you know, it'll be equal to. But as of right now, having this as a native, you know, either app or just after dialing, it pops up. That's when it comes to, you know, to me, Apple is the better version there. Let's talk about cameras. A lot of people care about the cameras. And to me, personally, it's going to be up to you when it comes to the cameras. Now, everyone knows iPhone takes great photos, but if you want accurate, like, skin tones, you want natural look, you want basically the whole nine, Google has been running things for years off of a single camera lens when Apple and Samsung have gone to three different lenses. Google technically held it down with one or two, and the camera quality that the the pictures that Google produces is basically unmatched when it comes to like perfection. Like it's not too light. It's not too dark. It's like spot on. Now, again, you may get a few sharper here and there. Nighttime photos vary, but overall, when it comes to photos, when it comes to photos, it's hard to beat this Google pixel guys. It's, it's really hard. Now on Saturday videos, Videos is automatically going to be better here. There is no comparison between the two. Now, if we was talking about another phone like the Galaxy or whatever, I could go back and forth with you guys. But hands down, Apple is the king of the videos, period. Now, with that being said, everyone isn't a content creator. So if you're not really using the video camera to make videos, you're recording little clips here and there, then, hey, you could get away with the Google Pixel 7. Either way it goes. Now, the next category I want to talk about, and let's unlock it, is with apps or app integrations with the said camera. So if you're a social media head, which most people are these days, if you have Instagram, TikTok, or even Facebook and things of that nature, to me, Apple is going to have that on lock because it's just smooth. When you're uploading your pictures to Instagram or whatever, I don't know what they're doing and how they're doing it. That's not my department. But again, Apple is going to win in that department. Now, another thing that I don't personally like about Google, again, and I'm not trying to bash Google because again, this is a great phone. But when you're comparing, I got to tell you my honest opinion. Google has this thing to where everything is uploaded to Google Photos. It doesn't have a natural gallery like the actual photos app here. So, again, you have the magic eraser and things like that in the Google Photos app. So, editing is fun and everything. But, me personally, I like having a natural gallery because, again, imagine you're on a flight or whatever and you got videos uploaded to Google Photos. Now, I say you can't download them to the phone. But when you're downloading them to the phone, you kind of run out of storage fast because if you haven't noticed, if you're a Pixel user, it's kind of harder to get your hands on a 256 or 512 Google Pixel as opposed to a 256 iPhone. And so you could purchase this storage and whatever. But again, everybody ain't flying, so I leave the flights out of it. Just somewhere where your phone signal isn't great because let's not act like everyone lives in New York City and Houston to where it's phone service is just A1. So when you get in a Google phone and you uploading everything, all the pictures you're taking and the videos you're downloading going straight to the cloud however you're in a spot that has spotted internet service you can't go back and watch it here you download something to apple tv or whatever that's downloaded you can just watch it on hand without having to rely on internet or things like that so that being said apple guys 
Apple. Also, let's go back to that ecosystem conversation I was having earlier. Now, I was comparing it to with just music, but here's the thing. Let's just take music out of it. Google's iteration of the watch, it is its first version of the watch, so I'm going to let it slide. But when, it, when you're comparing it with an Apple Watch, as of right now, the integrations that Apple has with everything in its ecosystem, Google can't compete right now. So the Apple Watch versus the Pixel Watch, is, is that argument is dead. Also, guys, let's compare when it comes to security. Now, with me, I personally like the fingerprint sensor. Now, the last year's model of the fingerprint sensor on the Google Pixel 7 Pro was trash. And even with the Face ID, like to me, it's it's quicker on here, on the Google. Actually, if I'm looking at it, like if I look at it behind the camera, it's faster. This one is just more secure. But me personally, I like the option that you have both. So Apple step it up in that department. Face ID is cool, but again, I always suggest fingerprint sensor on the side for those that don't want to use their Face ID. But Apple does what Apple does. So Now, this is kind of a category I'm going to go into that may not matter to as many people. But this whole, and I got on Apple about this before, this whole 120 hertz display thing. Like, I, I don't know what to tell y'all. I'm going to go to Instagram real quick and I'm going to try to swipe as quick as I possibly can just to show y'all. And I'm going to let it refresh on both. So here's the thing. So, I don't know what's going on here, but, and I'm going to switch hands. So, I'm trying to swipe hard just to show y'all. So, if we switch back here, to me, Google is swiping a lot faster than Apple is. And I know Apple is a, supposed to be a 120 hertz display, but this one feels more like 120 hertz. Now, I don't know if it's the Tensor chip or the Snapdragon or the... um. A16 Bionic Ultra Fusion. I don't know what it is, but to me, when it comes to refresh rates, I think Samsung just has it down packed. This isn't a comparison with Samsung, but it feels faster than both of these when you, when it comes to swiping. However, with the iPhone, it just feels faster on the Google Pixel 7, just to keep it in comparison. So when it comes to that, guys, the feel of the phone, what you're getting that feels smoother, is going to be the pixel, regardless of what the chip can actually do. And let's talk about that chip, by the way. Now, when you're talking about the chips between the phone, again, everybody may or may not compare care about this, but I'm going to just go into it for, you know, time's sake or whatever. The processors, Google's processor is good, but it can't hold up against the, um, Apple's chip. And here's why. When it comes to, if you're a video editor, Again, Apple is going to win. Now, when it comes to, here's where the Google Pixel shines with their chip. When it comes to um, speech to text and AI and things of that nature, if I ask Google, and this is where Google is just better all the way around. If I ask Siri something and ask Google the same question, Siri's going to say, here's what I found, here's the website, blah, blah, blah. Google is going to give me the straight up answer. If I ask for navigation, it may give me one route. This is going to give me the exact route. So when it comes to accurate with di accuracy, <laughs> with directions, with uh, research, with anything that you're looking up on the internet, you know, translations or whatever, undefeated. <laughs> right here is undefeated when it comes to anything like that. Even with Samsung, if I have them side by side and using the Google Assistant on both, for whatever reason, this chip makes it very, very accurate. So. If you're the type of person that don't really care about learning a phone and just want your assistant to do everything for you, you could tell it to call whoever, text whoever, whatever you tell it to do, nine times out of ten, this one is going to do it and it's going to do it faster than when it comes to the iPhone. So that's my spiel with that. Now, overall, which one is the best phone? I've held y'all long enough and I've told y'all a little bit about both of y'all want to see other stuff about the phones. There are several other videos out there. I have them both on their latest softwares and uh, security updates, whatever you want to call it. But to me, overall, you'll be surprised. The iPhone is a better phone. It just is. Google has come a long way. And I mean a long way when it comes to bugs and things like that. And not to get Apple a pass because I'm sick of these 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.18 updates to fix minor things that 
you might make it fixed on some like 10,000 phones and may break something else on 30,000. So you're creating problems instead of fixing them and just updating. And to me, it's like, all right, whatever. It's kind of like, I don't know. But anyways, that's just me when it comes to that. But the iPhone is overall a better phone, guys. I don't know how else to tell you. The ecosystem, get you a pair of AirPods. If you're here, you get you a pair of Google Buzz, whatever. Apple is going to sound better. Camera-wise, overall, the whole package goes to Apple because, again, the photos on here are better, but they ain't bad on the iPhone by any stretch of the imagination. Video, untouched. When it comes to overall messaging and video chats and social media, untouched. Now, to me, this is the more boring option because they both aren't just great in terms if you're going stock as far as what these phones can do. But overall... As of right now, to me personally, and this is coming from an Android user, mainly Samsung, but an Android user, the iPhone is overall a better phone. So here's one to Apple. Um, if y'all want to, you know, debate down below, of course, we could get into customization and things of that nature. You know, I could go back and forth all day long. But overall, Google, well, Google versus Apple, Apple wins. Take that how you want to. Um, if you have any questions or want to know anything else or any extra reasons why I feel the way I feel, leave it in the comment section below. Continue to subscribe, guys. We're on the way to 1,000. I really appreciate everyone who has. Everyone who's watching the videos, continue to watch. I appreciate y'all. I can't say it enough. I've come a long way, guys. I should have started this a long time ago, but I have a very deep passion for tech, as you can see throughout my uh, channel. But again, I appreciate y'all. I say it a thousand times. Uh, thank y'all for watching. Share the video. Like it. Comment. Subscribe. On the road to a thousand, guys. Catch y'all in the next one. Deuces.